<laughs> outside of striking distance. <laughs> so, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's David, and I'm the other best man, and the other David as well. Um, and a groom should always choose a best man who is resourceful, diplomatic, and inoffensive. And as you're about to see, Matt is an appalling judge of character. <laughs> so when Matt asked me to be best man, I was extremely privileged, and I thought I'd prepare a few lines. And having snorted them, I feel absolutely <laughs> fine. But uh, seriously, um, being from the UK, uh, I was a little concerned about offending my audience. Uh, and so I didn't want to go for the Ricky Gervais, uh, kind of scrub that one out. But I did ask Heather if there were any topics which I should avoid uh, when I came up here today. And she said, as long as I stay clear of religion, war or sex, then I should be fine. <laughs> so after rewriting my speech... <laughs> I decided that there are still some UK traditions that should be included in this ceremony. For example, the age-old British tradition between the bridesmaids and the best man. <laughs> so, girls, I'm in room 425 of the Houghton Garden Inn. Be there, at one o'clock. Keep your heels on. Uh, but on a more serious note, ladies and gentlemen, I did want to say how beautiful Heather looks tonight. She was absolutely stunning. Uh, I couldn't believe what I saw her, and it's been such an amazing day, a beautiful location. Uh, and I also wanted to thank all the bridesmaids and the parents of uh, Matt and uh, Heather as well, uh, Alison and Keith, and of course Rick and Donna. And I think a special uh, shout goes out to Vera as well, who's Matt's 87-year-old grandmother. Yay! I think she's putting us, uh, a lot of us to shame tonight. So, before I go on to completely demolish Matt's reputation and character, I wanted to give you a little background and really take over from where David left off. Uh, I met Matt shortly after he'd uh, scraped a degree from Sheffield Polytechnic, <laughs> which, which will probably ring, uh, ring some bells with the English tale over there. But that's a, a town in the, in the north of England. Uh, Matt and I were actually in a band together. Uh, I was the bass player and Matt was the drummer. And I would like to say that uh, we went on to achieve worldwide stardom. We signed a major record label deal and toured the world. But no, we played three gigs, we didn't have a name, and we didn't even have any endings to our songs. But I think as Dave mentioned before, um, Matt doesn't actually look too different to how he did then, uh, but that probably has more to do with him dyeing his hair as opposed to any genetic code. Seriously, he didn't think that hair was natural, did you? But uh, when Matt was, uh, I mean, we met nearly 20 years ago. When Matt was in his 20s, he was actually a bit of a geek. <laughs> and that's something that, he, that has really never left him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he hadn't really socialised much outside of our band. So it was really left for me to introduce him to people uh, and bring him out of his shell. But it was quite difficult, really. It's easier said than done, because if there's one thing the people who know Matt never forget about Matt is how tight he is. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Woo! laughs> now, Matt is so tight that on his gravestone it will probably read first out of the taxi, last to the bar. <laughs> so, Matt, tonight, seeing as the bar is on you, you'll find me over there getting my 20 years' money. 
<laughs> um, so, where am I? <laughs> Speech. Um, yeah, there's a, well, there's a two or three other things as well that uh, people you know might never forget about Matt. Uh, one, he's very tall. Uh, can't really see that because he's sat down now. Uh, also, he bears a striking resemblance to uh, an ugly Keanu Reeves. <laughs> And, and, fi and uh, the final thing that people who know Matt always remember about Matt is his appalling fashion sense. <laughs> now, it's a little difficult to see that today because, obviously, yeah, well, Heather, obviously the more stylish of the two, has uh, chosen these two, so it was very nice, Heather. Thank you very much. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yes, he's... Um, Problem with the fashion, always the case. In fact, Matt uh, actually still wears some of the same clothes <laughs> that he did when I met him 20 years ago. Yeah. Heather, let's just hope he changes his wife as often as he changes his wardrobe. <laughs> but seriously, Heather, I do think that you've made a wonderful choice for your first husband. <laughs> And the funny thing is uh, about how, how Heather met her first husband was, was I was actually there the nights that they met. So here's the story. I've cut out of it. I've cut out of it. Um, so we were going to a launch party uh, in London. on a, It was actually on a boat, which was moored on the River Thames. And myself, Matt, uh, and a friend of ours, Ben, uh, we decided to meet in a pub opposite. Uh, a few beers in, I decided to go to the bathroom, uh, the restroom, for you guys. Uh, and a couple of minutes later, I came back, and there uh, were two girls that appeared at our table. One of the girls was Heather, and the other one was her friend, Lenore. <laughs> so I try not to get too uh, overly concerned about this, or annoyed, seeing as the girls had appeared when I wasn't there. But I quickly got over it. Uh, and uh, we had a great time with the girls, and we invited them to uh, the launch party over the road. Uh, at that point, everyone started to power off. Matt with Heather, Ben, well, who was with us, his girlfriend turned up, so I'm lucky him, and myself with Lenore, Heather's friend. Uh, Matt and Heather's relationship blossomed, and here they are six years later. On the other hand, my relationship with Lenore... <laughs> was passionate, yet short-lived, <laughs> and she dumped me a couple of weeks later. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm not bitter, and um, apparently she's now happily married to somebody else, uh, and I wish her all the luck for the future. But frankly, I'm just glad the bitch isn't here. <laughs> Apparently she is here. <laughs> Lenore, uh, you're not a bitch. It's just a joke. Sorry. I'll get you a drink at the bar later. It's on me. <laughs> but it's not really been too uh, too bad being best man. The only other things I had to do was uh, to make sure that Matt turned up on time, sober, and with his hair and face in order. Well, on time. Well. You're here, I'm here. Well done. Sober, again. Glad that you sat down, Matt. Hair and face in order. Well, two out of three isn't bad. I mean, look what I've had to work with. I'm only a best man, I'm not a plastic surgeon. <laughs> but uh, seriously, Matt, um, uh, uh, to talk about Matt and Heather as a couple, I do genuinely appreciate them both as, uh, as caring uh, friends. Uh, and I knew it was uh, going to be serious from the start. Uh, they've conducted their relationship over continents, and I think anyone here who's had a long-distance relationship will know how difficult it is to maintain it, and they've managed to do that with apparent ease, and that's testament to their love for each other. So I'm extremely privileged to be your best man. Just don't ask me to be a godparent. <laughs> and so Matt and... <laughs> So, um, Matt 
as you move into the next uh, chapter of your life, I did go around some of the other married men uh, here today to get a bit of advice for you. So here goes. There are three rings in marriage. The engagement ring, the wedding ring, and suffering. <laughs> and similarly, there are three rules in marriage. I'm sorry, you're right, and I'll never do it again. <laughs> Matt, if you obey those rules, you'll have a happy wife and a happy life. So we've been great friends for a number of years. You've always been a really good friend to me. I'm sure, well, even after this, hopefully we'll be friends in the future. <laughs> um, we've had some great times together. Uh, and I'm sure we'll continue to have great times uh, as we move forward as well. You're a very lucky guy to have me as a friend. <laughs> and you're even luckier to have Heather as your wife. <laughs> so, on that note, if everyone could find themselves a drink of David, if you want to come and join me. Uh, if they want to be upstanding as well, uh, and raise a toast to Heather and Matt. You, Mr. and Mrs. Thompson, may their marriage be a long and happy one. To the bride and groom. <laughs> <laughs>